Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you are going to learn how to model structural members in the new STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this first video, we're going to be working on getting started, which will include getting comfortable with the graphical user interface, learning how to model basic nodes and members, and also how to select objects. Now before we begin, let's give you a little background on STAD Pro. STAD Pro is a finite element-based structural analysis engineering software product for 3D modeling, generation, analysis, and multi-material design. When you are ready to start creating your new model in STAD Pro Connect Edition, you're going to launch the program by double-clicking on the icon on your desktop. When you launch the program, it's going to ask you which type of license you would like to use for STAD Pro. And for this training, we're just going to use our traditional STAD Pro license. Now upon entering STAD Pro Connect Edition, you're going to immediately be greeted by the start screen. And here's where you're going to want to set up your program before creating a new model or opening an existing model. The first thing we're going to take a look at is our additional licenses section located at the bottom right hand corner of this start screen. If you plan on using STAD.Biva, STAD.PlanWin, or RAM connection during your current session, you're going to want to activate these licenses before going into your STAD Pro model. In addition to that, if we look over at the left hand side of our screen, we can see a lot of different commands that we can activate within STAD Pro, including opening an existing model or creating a new model. In addition to that, we can also select our license configuration and we can configure the program. Now we're going to start by looking at our configuration because there's a few areas we're going to want to be aware of before creating our new model. The first area is in within this general tab and here we can select our base unit configuration. Now in STAD Pro the base unit selection dictates the system of units used internally to store numerical values during calculations. It also dictates the default input units and the default system of units used to display results in tables and reports. And you can select either the English or the metric unit. Now regardless of the base unit settings, it is possible to change the current input units at any time during the modeling process. However, you are going to want to be aware that mixing unit systems will require an internal conversion that carries a finite number of significant digits. Because these conversions cannot be mathematically exact, converting between unit systems can be a potential source of modeling issues if round off errors become significant. In addition to that, we're going to take a look at our global axis orientation. Now the location of entities in STAD Pro model is defined with reference to the origin of the global or Cartesian coordinate system. The default coordinate orientation of the global coordinate system is that the y-axis points in the vertical direction and a plan view is represented by the xz plane. You do have an option to specify the vertical axis as a z-axis, but this option will eliminate the ability to use some of the other functions of the program such as the wind load generator. For this training we're going to use the English base unit system and we're going to ensure that the global axis is set to the default of Y being up. Once we're done we can go ahead and click OK. We are now ready to create a new model so over at the left hand side of your screen click on the new option. Here we're going to name our structure we'll just call our structure 1 and we can choose a location on our machine. In addition to that new in STAD Pro Connect Edition we have a couple different types of structures that you can select. The first type is the analytical model workflow. This will be used to model your structure using analytical elements. The analytical model is a finite element model of the structure which is typically processed directly by the analysis and design engine and this is our traditional way of modeling in STAD Pro. And next to that is our new physical model or workflow. This will be used to model your structure in the STAD Pro physical modeler using physical members. 
The physical model is used to draw structural elements as they are physically constructed. The program will then decompose this into an analytical model, which is passed to the STAD Pro analysis and design engine when you run your model. Now the focus of this training today will be on the analytical modeling workflow, so we'll select the analytical option here. The last thing we need to do is ensure that we have our English units selected. When you are now ready to officially create your new model, we're going to click on this Create button, which will immediately pass us into the main STAD Pro graphical user interface. Now before we begin modeling our structure, let's first go over the STAD Pro graphical user interface to make sure you're familiar with it. Over at the top of the screen, you're going to find your quick access toolbar, which contains commonly used tools such as save your model or open a new model. Over at the top right hand side of the screen, you're going to find your connect tools, which will connect you to the connect advisor and your connect user profile. Over in the ribbon toolbar at the top of the screen, the first tab will be the file tab. This will enter the file management tools and program configuration. To return back to the graphical user interface, you can just click on the arrow, which will bring you right back. At the top of the screen, you'll also find your ribbon toolbar. This will provide access to the STAD Pro modeling, analysis, and design commands. Below that will be your workflow page control area, which is used to select the page for the current workflow. Over at the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to find your workflow panel, which will select the current modeling workflow. Today we're going to be using the analytical modeling workflow. At the right hand side of the screen you're going to find your data area which will contain tables and page dialogues and also your model status. In the center of the screen is your view window which will display the graphical representation of the model and any other display options. Finally at the bottom of the window you're going to find your status bar which will present useful information regarding the status of the program. It will also display pertinent information for the current page, such as hints for using the current command, current program operation mode, the cursor position, and the current input units. Now let's focus on our workflow page control area at the top of the screen. The organization of the tabs in the workflow page control from left to right represent the logical sequence of operations in STAD Pro. Generally, it is recommended to process through the tabs from left to right to enter the data that is relevant for your project. Now, the first step in any typical workflow is to start with your geometry, which is what we're going to be focusing on for today's course. So to begin our modeling process, we're going to make sure that the geometry tab in the workflow page control area is currently selected. When this is selected, we're going to notice that the data area contains two different tables. On the top, you'll find the nodes table. This will list the node numbers and their coordinates. This table can be used to define new nodes and edit existing node coordinates. We're going to notice that the units in this table are currently set to feet, and we're going to remember that our y-axis is our vertical axis for STAD Pro. Below that, we're going to find our beams table. Now, this will list the members and their incidences, along with the member properties, materials, and member lengths once they're available. This table can be used to add new or existing beams. Now, in STAD Pro, we have several different tools available for you to start creating your model geometry. For this first video, we're going to use the data area to enter our nodal coordinates and our beam information. After that, then we'll move on to using some of the other tools once we get comfortable with the graphical user interface. So over in the nodes table, we're going to start by entering our nodal coordinates. We're going to start with node 1, which is going to be at 0, 0, 0. Then we're going to enter all the coordinates, and we're going to create eight different nodes.
Next, we're going to enter our beam geometry, which is created by selecting the starting and ending node of a member. To make this easier for us, we're going to turn on our node numbers. So now up in our ribbon toolbar, we're now going to select the view tab And we're going to select our node labels icon, which is going to turn on all of your node numbers, which correspond to the nodes up in this table. This will make it a little easier to identify where we want our nodes to go. So beam number one will be going from node number one to node number two. So we'll select node number one to node number two. Then we're going to continue this process and we're going to create six members using this workflow. Now before we continue with our modeling process, let's first discuss how to select different types of elements within STAD Pro. If I go up to my ribbon toolbar, I'm now going to select my geometry tab and I'm going to find the area for the selection tools. Now in STAD Pro, you have several different cursors that are available for selecting the various types of STAD Pro entities. Each cursor selects specific types of objects for editing or manipulation. Having specific cursors can be very convenient when assigning properties where various types of entities are crowded together. Multiple entities can also be selected by pressing down the control key and clicking those particular members. Let's first start with our beams cursor, which we're going to select from our ribbon toolbar. I can select a single element just by clicking on it, or if I want to select multiple elements, I can hold down my control key and either click on the member or draw a fence around it. If I want to unselect everything currently selected, I can just click anywhere in the view window, which will turn off the selection. I can do the same type of workflow for my nodes. Again, I hold down my control key, I can select my nodes, or I can draw a fence around a series of nodes to select them. In addition to that, all members can also be selected through the different options or the different cells within the data area. So here you can see I've selected node number two, Node number two is now turned red on my view window. I can also select members using that option as well. In addition to that, I have several different tools available between, beneath each of these cursors. Like for example, I can use the beams cursor area to say, select all beams parallel to the global Y axis. I can also maybe choose to invert the selection, which will choose turn off everything previously selected and then turn on everything that wasn't selected. Now it's important to get familiar with the different selection options available in STAD Pro as several different commands will require you to make a selection first before invoking that command. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.